Kidney stones are, are really very common. Um, up to uh, about 13% now of men uh, and about 6 or 7% of women um, um, would be expected to ha have kidney stone uh, at some time during their life, typically in the middle years, uh, starting in the 20s and uh, peaking in the 50s. Kidney stones um, are rocks, if you will, that uh, develop in the uh, urinary tract. Um, they are basically concretions or, or uh, deposits that um, are there by virtue of filtration of waste from your uh, kidneys, um, which is a natural function. Uh, though in some patients who are predisposed, uh, uh, those wastes uh, include minerals that can turn into kidney stones. If you're making uh, stones, they may be as small as a grain of sand or they might be as large as a golf ball. And so naturally, if they're small, if they're small enough, you may pass them and not even know it. Uh, but the larger they are, the more difficult they are to, to pass. And once they pass into the urinary tract from the kidney, uh, generally there is a, a, a kidney stone attack involving pain, uh, sometimes nausea or vomiting. Uh, so it's possible that you'll become quite sick as the kidney and the ureter try to pass the stone. Um, so this is what we're trying to prevent uh, with our uh, kidney stone prevention uh, clinic. In the summertime, uh, or in the hotter months, there is an increased um, incidence of uh, kidney stones occurring in, in our stone formers. Uh, this is because um, uh, our bodies use a lot of water, and if we're not taking in extra fluids, then we're becoming uh, dehydrated. Well, diet can be very important. Uh, with the usual type of kidney stones, uh, diet can make a difference, again, between whether you're actively making stones, making the ones you have bigger, uh, or not. Um, much of it has to do with concentration of these uh, mineral salts. Um, the, uh, the concentration then has to do with, uh, with fluid intake. And it does make a difference what type of fluid that you take in. Um, if you take in fluids that are rich in citrate, Citrate is a stone inhibiting substance that complexes with calcium and uh, helps to prevent calcium stones, which are the most common type. And so those liquids tend to be things, um, are, are things such as uh, lemonade or limeade or lemon lime um, sodas. Once you have a kidney stone attack and a kidney stone problem, it's not going to go away on its own. You're not going to outgrow it. Uh, it's going to continue to be a problem unless you address it with uh, specific uh, changes um, that will then allow you to uh, become a non-active stone former. Those measures will include um, things such as adjustment in your diet and fluid intake, but also uh, quite possibly medications uh, to assist with getting uh, your chemistry uh, improve to the point where you're no longer prone to making kidney stones. We have a multi-specialty clinic which involves uh, four different departments actually. Uh, the emergency department uh, is often where our patients uh, will enter uh, when they're having their acute attacks. Uh, the urology uh, clinic and the urologist are involved as well, uh, especially with respect to treating those acute attacks and relieving obstructing stones or other problematic uh, kidney stone situations. Uh, the radiologists um, are actively involved as well as we have some highly advanced uh, cutting edge imaging techniques which allow us to see uh, where kidney stones are in the urinary tract, their size, their volume, uh, and even to a certain extent what they're made of. And also, then also our nephrology department 
uh, which is where we have our prevention clinic. This is uh, where we'll be addressing what is the cause of the stone problem and what is it that that individual needs to do to uh, allow them to not have any further problems with active stone formation uh, and to then uh, land on a regimen which will serve them going forward because otherwise, absent doing that, uh, their likelihood of having more and more kidney stone problems is, is quite high.